look, social media has gone corporate. So we have the great Scott Monty here, the architect behind bringing Ford Motor Company into a whole new era. And uh, this day is extra special, Scott, because the very first production Model T came out 101 years ago today. That's right. So, that, yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. And uh, <laughs> you're not getting anything over on Scott Monty. He, he already knew. <laughs> All right. Well, I just wanted to impress Scott that I actually did a little bit of research before we had him on the program. Uh, you saw one of my tweets today. <laughs> I did. I was following you. And I also learned that you're actually not the head of social media, but you're the global digital and multimedia communications manager. That's what they call me. How do you fit that on a business card? Uh, you don't. I haven't had business cards since March. <laughs> All right, so let, let's get straight to some of the good content. We got a lot of people out here, and there's a lot of questions that folks have wanted to ask you. Now, I would assume okay. when you first went into Ford, into the, the, the really hardcore corporate world, that a lot of your traditional peers probably weren't completely open arms about it. Uh, how did you deal maybe with some of that? Uh, did some of the traditional guys look at you as maybe Mr. Tweet Tweet? And uh, did you have to earn some respect, or did you already have it? going in well the interesting thing about ford is that there was a um, <clears throat> there was a real desire to fill this position out and to to get active in this space uh our vp of communications ray day uh as he was putting uh you know kind of recrafting what communications at ford motor company looked like uh, he knew that Ford Motor Company needed to take social media more seriously and act uh, as if it weren't just a hobby, but to integrate it into our strategic communications plans. And he knew we not only needed to uh, get up to speed with social media, but if we were going to be uh, the Ford Motor Company that we uh, aspire to be, then we'd have to be a leader in the social media space. Uh, so when I arrived at Ford Motor Company uh, just a little over a year ago, um, and I came from a small consultancy that specialized in uh, social media advisory services, um, I was fully prepared to step into a situation where I had to convince people why this was important and do the upsell and, you know, really go against the uh, the prevailing winds, uh, so to speak. And quite frankly, uh, it was anything but and has been anything but. Um, I think it, it's been um, an experience where people have uh, been excited about it, uh, have been curious, and continued to look for guidance as to how they can uh, institute social media within their uh, piece of the pie within Ford Motor Company. So people are really, and as we've had more success with it publicly, people are really getting on board and saying, yeah, this is clearly where the future lies for us. Uh, it's another piece of our marketing and communications efforts, uh, and we all realize that we need to work together to make it happen. Fantastic. Wow. So that must have been really, I mean, that made it a lot more exciting for you, especially a, a nice leap from Crayon into another company that is grasping the whole social media concept. But here's my question. You are representing Ford, and Ford is not just a company. It's an icon. I mean, it's an international icon. So when you're now doing social media, and social media is a very interactive kind of, of thing, how are you dealing with the red tape and the, and the army of lawyers that are standing there waiting for anything to happen? Uh, I hope and pray that they haven't caught on to any of this stuff yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, um, a couple of things uh, with that. First of all, um, obviously we do have an army of lawyers. We call them OGC, the Office of General Counsel. Um, and it's very important that we adhere to some of the things that they counsel us on um, because everything we do in the public eye is under scrutiny, knowing full well that we live in a litigious society, uh, that regulatory and safety claims are, are rife, and that, quite frankly, Ford Motor Company uh, you know, has been in the courts before and needs to be extra careful about what it does and how it documents its behavior, uh, both online and offline, as we deal with uh, issues related to our vehicles. Uh, that being said, 
I've also been entrusted with this brand, with this global and American icon that 95% of the people in the world are familiar with when they're, when they're shown that, that blue oval. Um, and I take that very seriously. I recognize that I can't necessarily be as freewheeling or as cavalier uh, in dealing with people on the web than I would have been if I were just working for an independent consultancy. So in some cases, personality-wise, I may have to dial back, but that's not to say that I make it bland and just all corporate either. Um, and, and what we found is that as people have seen our success grow and have seen Ford uh, kind of stake its claim in the social media space, uh, people have been, uh, particularly uh, within Ford, they, they trust us uh, from the, the social media team to, to, do it, to do what it is that we do. And the fact that our chief general counsel uh, actually has his own blog internally for his staff is a good sign. Um, and he got onto Twitter earlier this summer as part of an executive Summer of Taurus tour where we took top executives uh, from around the company and dropped them into various cities with uh, the new Taurus. We actually had them uh, involved with people online and tweeting and doing live chats and blog talk radio and things like that. Um, so we've been introducing this at a variety of levels and sharing it in a very personal way to show our executive team exactly what the impact can be. And they are all... Uh, to a person behind it and uh, completely enthusiastic about it. So I think we're figuring out ways to work within uh, the system to make sure that we have the freedom to speak plainly, uh, yet we still adhere to the regulations and the policies that we need to uh, as part of the process. Well, that's fantastic. Okay. I mean, it's, it's great to see a brand like Ford that's been innovative for 101 years, your industry has been somewhat decimated over the last five years, and to see Ford rise out of all of those issues and actually be a leader and an innovator, while other companies are still scared, right? They're, they're afraid to jump into this social media space. So what do you think they're afraid of? I mean, it's awesome to see a company like yours. You're not in the trend. You're ahead of the trend. So what's everybody else afraid of? <laughs> Excuse me. Well, um, I, I actually just wrote a post uh, last night. I think it was last night. It was, it's, it's time gets away from me. Uh, my latest blog post uh, is called Fear and Loathing in Social Media. And it, it uh, investigates this notion that uh, there are still companies uh, in this day and age that are hesitant to get on board. And what's stopping them? Uh, a couple of things. Loss of control of the message and just not feeling as if they're competent enough in the space, okay? So let, let's address each one of those, because I think they're, they're very valid fears, uh, and they're shared by companies small and large. Uh, first of all, loss of control. Um, if you think you've lost control of your brand, or, or if you think, uh, let me state it another way, if you think that by entering social media, you lose control of your brand, that's that's the wrong attitude to take because I would argue that you've already lost control of your brand. It's been in the hands of your consumers for years. It's just that now we have uh, many more ways of seeing it happen and observing it and listening to it. And if you get involved in social media, you have a way to respond. You have a way to show the world that you're actually listening. You have you have the chance for a two-way dialogue with your customers. And for a traditional marketer who's just been used to push marketing one way, here's our message, take it. It's a very, very different way of thinking. And I don't care what the platform is, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or blogging or Flickr or whatever, because the tools are going to change over time. It's, it's getting used to that new kind of behavior, getting back to the basics, really, of business, what business is all about, having relationships with your customers. You know, in, in the advance of uh, the mass marketing movement, over the last 50 to 60 years, we've kind of moved farther and farther away from what business was always about, a handshake, uh, a sense of trust, um, you know, the, the conversation over the pickle barrel in the country store, or, you know, when, when we were all kids and walking into the bank with mom and dad and the teller or the vice president knowing the name of your kid and what grade he was in. You know, now you walk into the bank, you have to show three forms of ID before you can get out the door. So how how 
dehumanized has the mass marketing approach and technology made us? 